Now, if you're listening or watching this video, chances are you're either interested in getting into RC racing or getting back into RC racing after a long break. Maybe you've gone on forums and seen people get blasted for not knowing basic knowledge, quote unquote. Now, it would be impossible for me to go over each and every single aspect of the hobby, but I can tell you a bit about the most popular part of it. 10th scale off-road racing. Now, it's debatable which is more popular, 8th scale versus 10th scale, but we're just going to focus on 10th scale for today. First thing you'll want to know, of course, is where can I race? Now, there are plenty of tools to help you find a local track, but too many of them are far out of date, sometimes by years. Look up track finders from big name companies like Team Associate or Team Losi Racing. They're usually up to date and generally have the best tracks. However, don't be afraid to just check local RC tracks on Google search. You'll eventually find something. Another thing you'll need to find out next is what kind of track it might be. The most common tracks you'll find for off-road racing will be hard packed or loose dirt, damp clay, carpet, and astroturf. Sometimes if you're lucky, you'll have access to multiple types of tracks at once. Each different type of track has their own characteristics and you'll need to adjust your driving according to that. The best way to start off is just to look at whatever else is running. This is a hobby where going against the grain isn't really going to help you. People are running slicks, then you should run slicks. I've never personally seen someone tell someone off simply because they wanted to see what they were running. Generally people are willing to help you out in this hobby, and if they aren't, then they're not the kind of person you want to hang around anyway. This sort of mindset also extends to what kind of brand of RC you should run as well. The brands you'll mostly find running most tracks will be Team Associated, Losi, Techno, Schumacher, Kyosho, X-Ray, Yokomo, and sometimes Serpent. The most popular you'll find in the US would be Team Associated and Losi, so I'd recommend you start with one of those. Specifically Team Associated because of just how common parts are for them at stores. However, just like I said before, it's best to run what others run as well. If you go to a track where everyone decides to run X-Ray or Serpent, then get an X-Ray or a Serpent. There's also the debate as to whether or not to get a ready-to-run or a kit. In a lot of cases, you'll simply not have a choice. Sometimes cars only come as kits. Of course, a ready-to-run seems very enticing, though. It comes with everything you need to get going on day one. However, for racing, I'd recommend getting a kit instead, and there are a few reasons why. First off, there's the concern of repairs. Building a kit will give you more experience needed to work on your car if something needs to be changed or more likely repaired. You'll know how things are supposed to fit together, you'll know how the car is supposed to feel, and you'll have a basic understanding of how to set them up. Then there's the question of upgrades. Lots of times, RTRs don't come with upgraded parts like aluminum servo horns, aluminum turnbuckles, aluminum really anything at all. It's usually all made out of plastic. Whereas kits already come with all of these things. These same things that you're eventually going to put onto your RTR anyway to make it race ready. Long story short, you might spend more upfront on a kit and everything you need to make it go, but you'll have enough experience and equipment to last you for years to come. It's also important to note that when it comes to RC, you usually get what you pay for. If you buy a small, cheap servo, don't expect it to last in something like a short horse truck or a four-wheel drive buggy. Savak is the go-to brand when it comes to servos. Coreless and brushless servos are the best you can buy and will provide the best torque and speed for your applications. For 10 scale racing, speed tends to be more important than torque, so apply your wallet accordingly. As for motors and ESCs, the most common you'll find will be Reedy, Hobbywing, and Tekken. Tekken being a little bit more high-end. These three are very easy to work with and program to your liking. As for transmitters and receivers, the only really important part is to make sure that all of your receivers are the same brand and to get a transmitter with multiple model memory. That way you don't have to switch between transmitters and receivers over and over again. I won't spend too long on batteries other than that you'll want to run a shorty pack like this with bullet connectors that go straight into the terminals. Speaking of classes, there are a few I want to touch on, but keep in mind that each of the classes has a stock and a mod class. Basically mod is an open class, and stock is where everyone stays with the same sort of power or even the same motor. The first and most populated class is two-wheel drive buggy. This is the class most people start out with, and sometimes I struggle to see why. The reason I find it odd that this is considered a beginner class is the margin of error is very small in buggies in general. If you hit another car, it's easy to get caught up and crash due to the open wheel design. This applies to any and all open wheel racing in general. Not to mention the fact that all of the more important components like shocks and A-arms are all exposed. This means that breaking something is far more likely. 
car you're seeing now is a B6.2. You're gonna see a lot of them and Team Associated in general in this video. Next up we have short course trucks. Stock classes on this tend to be a little bit more powerful than two-wheel drive buggies, but they do weigh a bit more. As a result of this and the bigger tires and the big parachute body, they tend to be a bit slower, but easier to drive. Coupled with the large body covering up most of the car, I'd say two-wheel drive or even four-wheel drive short course trucks are amazing for beginners due to their popularity, their durability, and the fact that this class isn't usually as competitive as buggies. The one you're looking at now is an SC 6.1. Here's a little side note though. If you have an artistic side, you'll probably end up spending hours or even days on a single body for one of these things. There are two other classes I didn't mention for two reasons, one each. The first one would be four-wheel drive buggies. Four-wheel drive buggies are just flat out not beginner friendly. They tend to be very twitchy and just, well, difficult to work on. Stadium trucks, on the other hand, are actually very beginner friendly and are sort of a mix between short course trucks and buggies. The reason why I didn't mention them very much is because they're not too popular right now. They are only really run at much larger tracks. However, if you have access to them, I'd highly recommend starting out with one of those before you go to buggies. I mostly do this because of their ease of setup and durability. If you want more info on stadium trucks, I highly recommend looking up Chris Harris's uh, video on stadium trucks and why he thinks they're more fun than buggies. He actually goes into depth on how they work and why they're more beginner friendly. Now you're finally on the track and you're ready to go. What are some things that can help my chances? The first thing everyone is going to tell you is to race your race or to race simple. In qualifying, it's just you versus the clock, so there's no need to worry about other drivers. In the main races at a club level, 9 out of 10 times, the person that wins is the one that makes the least mistakes, not the one with the fastest lap time. This is true at a club level and even at some higher end races. Don't take unnecessary risks, don't get caught up in pileups, and try to avoid flipping. I spent some time being angry at slow marshals when someone told me, if you don't like getting marshal, just don't crash. Of course, that's easier said than done, especially if you're new. But if you try to keep it simple and don't take any unnecessary risks, you'll more than likely end up on either the podium or even the first place in a sportsman class. So those are some basics on how to start RC racing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.